Let's look at some examples of some common types of problems we run into in discrete probability distributions. I'm going to assume you've already been introduced to the binomial distribution, the Poisson, the hypergeometric, and the geometric, although we can answer these geometric type of problems based on basic probability rules. In this first example, we're going to talk a little about Lotto 649 type of lotteries, and in these types of lotteries, ticket purchasers pick six numbers between 1 and 49, and repeats are not allowed. And then six numbered balls are randomly selected without replacement from the 49, and we see how many of those balls match our chosen numbers. And the more balls you get right, well, the more money you win. If you have a single ticket, what is the probability exactly two of your numbers are selected? If we let the random variable x represent the number of balls that match our chosen numbers, then we're interested in the probability that x is equal to 2. And, well, it's going to help if we know the distribution of x. So we are doing this something six times. We're picking these six random balls and seeing how many match ours. But this without replacement here is key. If a ball is selected, we look at the number and then it's put aside and it can't get picked again. So we are picking six things from a population that has six successes, the numbers we chose, and 43 failures, the numbers we didn't choose. And we're doing this without replacement and so our minds should be going towards the hypergeometric distribution here the hypergeometric distribution, and we want the probability that x is equal to 2, and this isn't going to be so bad. This is the number of ways we can get 2 correct over the total number of possible ways. And if we're picking 6 balls from 49, then the total number of ways is simply 49 choose 6, our choose function, 49 choose 6. And in the numerator, we would need the number of ways of getting exactly 2 correct. To get 2 correct, from our 6 that we picked, 2 must be chosen. But we're not done, because from the 43 we didn't pick, 4 must be chosen. And we simply use our choose function here, our combinations formula. We put all of this in, and we get 0 0.1324. Ticket owners win a cash prize if their numbers match at least 3 of the numbers drawn. What is the probability an individual ticket wins a cash prize? Same type of problem here, we have the probability that our random variable x, the number of correct numbers, is greater than or equal to 3. This is simply going to be equal to the probability x is equal to 3, plus the probability x is equal to 4, plus the probability x is equal to 5, and the probability x is equal to 6. And we simply use our formula, or think this through for each one of these terms and add them up. To get exactly three numbers correct, from our six numbers, three must be chosen. And out of the 43 failures, well, we're picking six numbers, so we have to pick three failures as well, out of the 49 choose six possible combinations. To get four numbers correct, from our six numbers, four must be chosen. From the 43 numbers we didn't pick, two must be chosen. And the bottom again is 49 choose six. Using similar logic over here, six choose five, times 43 choose 1, over 49 choose 6, and lastly, 6 choose 6, and the ones we didn't pick, pick none, over 49 choose 6. And if we work that out, we get a probability of 0 0.0186, and that is the probability that we get at least three numbers correct. Suppose a convenience store in a bad neighborhood is robbed at gunpoint at an average rate of 0.25 times per week. The robberies occur randomly and independently of one another, and the rate of robberies is constant through time. What is the probability that in a randomly selected two-week period, there are two or three robberies at gunpoint? If we let x represent the number of robberies at gunpoint in that time frame, then we want to know the probability that x is equal to 2 or 3. And so, we have to think about this. These robberies are occurring at a rate of 0.25 times per week, but they're also occurring randomly and independently of one another, and the rate of robberies is constant through time. So it's not changing, it's not really likely to happen at the beginning of the month, and then less likely at the end of the month, or what have you. The rate of robberies is constant through time. And this should be leading us to think about the Poisson distribution. And if we remember our Poisson formula, it's lambda to the x, e to the minus lambda, over x factorial where lambda is the average number in the time frame that we're talking about. And here we're talking about a two-week period, so we have to be a bit careful here. We're talking about a two-week period, and the average per week is 0.25. So lambda has got to be equal to 2 times 0 0.25, or 0 0.5. And now we want the probability that x is equal to 2, plus the probability that x is equal to 3. 
and we can use our Poisson formula. Lambda to the x, e to the minus lambda, over x factorial, plus lambda to the x, e to the minus lambda, over x factorial. And this works out to 0 0.0758 plus 0 0.0126. And if we do that, we get 0 0.0885 rounded to four decimal places. What is the probability that in a randomly selected four-week period, there's at least one robbery at gunpoint? Similar type of idea, except here we want the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 1. And so this is the probability that x is equal to 1, plus the probability that x is equal to 2, and so on, off to infinity. And that doesn't sound like too much fun to calculate, so we use the following argument. The possible values are 0, 1, 2, off to infinity. Those are the possible number of robberies in this four-week period. And we want the probability it's one or more. The only other possibility is zero. So the probability that x is bigger than or equal to one is simply one minus the probability that x is equal to zero. And now we only have to calculate one probability term and subtract it from one and we're done. So that's a lot easier. Now we need the lambda. Lambda is the average number of occurrences in the time frame that we're discussing. And we are talking about a four-week period where the average rate per week was 0.25, and so that is 1. And so this is simply going to be 1 minus lambda to the x, e to the minus lambda, over x factorial, which is 1 minus 0 0.3679, which is 0 0.6321. The probability a randomly selected Caucasian person in the U.S. is blood type O negative is 0 0.08. If 12 Caucasians in the U.S. are randomly selected, what is the probability exactly 3 have blood type O negative? For this type of problem, we are counting up the number of times something occurs in 12 trials. These individuals are randomly selected. Each individual one has the same probability of being blood type O negative, And all of these things add up to the binomial distribution being the correct probability distribution here. We want the probability that our random variable x is equal to 3, where x represents the number of people with blood type O negative in our sample. This is simply n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. 12 people, so n is 12. We want the probability of 3. p is the probability of success on any one trial, which is 0.08 to the third power. 1 minus 0.08 to the 12 minus 3. And this works out to 0 0.0532. Suppose a hospital desperately needs a pint of O negative blood, and Caucasian blood donors are randomly sampled until the first with blood type O negative is found. What is the probability the first person with blood type O negative is found in the seventh person sample? Well, first, we're going to need to have one extra little assumption here. Suppose that amongst Caucasian blood donors, the rate of blood type O negative is the same as among the general population of Caucasians. That may or may not be true, but suppose that is the case here. So the conditions on the last page still hold. And we want the probability the first person with blood type O negative is found in the seventh person sampled. So the probability any one person has blood type O negative is 0.08. The probability any one individual does not is 1 minus 0.08. So to get the first person with blood type O negative on the seventh person sampled, we need the first six people to not have blood type O negative. And if they're sampled randomly and independently, this is simply going to be 1 minus 0.08 to the sixth power. That's the probability the first six people do not have blood type O negative. But we must multiply this now by the probability the seventh person does have O negative blood. And that's simply multiplying by 0.08. And that works out to 0 0.0485. This was an example of the geometric distribution. Although we didn't really need to know that, we simply solved that with our basic probability rules.